What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrad89 here, continuing the Scooby-Doo review series as we are now on to a pup named Scooby-Doo. I am so excited, like this is one that I've been itching, itching to get to, because if you catch me on the right day or a specific time of day, I'm going to tell you this is the best version of Scooby-Doo you're going to get. The, my other series, I won't spoil because I want to get to the ranking video when we do that, but there's another series and it's a pup named Scooby-Doo and those two are the ones that are kind of always tussling for the top spot in my favorites of the show. So there's a lot to discuss about this one. So let's get down to this review. Roll it. A pup named Scooby, Scooby. A pup named Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, Be Doo, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo. Where are you, Scooby Doo? So I hope you guys enjoyed that fun little intro. I wanted to throw a little bit of spice at the end of the intro right there, and that kind of you know helps out with the positives once we discuss more about them and everything. But a pup named Scooby Doo came out in 1988. This ran for three seasons, went on to 1991, and we have the three seasons. That first season is the biggest uh, season. It has, I believe, 13 episodes in it, and then it goes down to eight, and then when we get to the third season, it goes down to six. So the episode uh, number decreases as you go down into the seasons, but one positive I must say is that Scooby-Doo was able, the pup named Scooby-Doo, was able to do the serial nature of some of the previous shows where they had one-off stories in like 30 minutes and they just ended it. But then they also have some stories about the characters in the background of, you know, Scooby, Shaggy, Daphne, Velma. We get to meet family members of theirs and all this kind of stuff. And it also has some continuing storyline episodes that are like part ones and part twos. So this season has a lot of stuff to offer and a lot of different variety. And one other positive right away we must discuss, as you saw from the intro, the theme song in this one is a total, total earworm. It'll get stuck in your head, and this is easily the best Scooby-Doo theme song because once you hear it, it's like nostalgia. If you've seen this show as a kid, it takes you right back. It sets you up for being a fun ride. It's a little bit spooky, but it's got a cool voice. Like the singer's got a cool voice. These awesome lines and lyrics, and the theme song like goes along with the title card sequence. You know, is just animated perfectly. So. It's a lot of fun. Every time I hear it, like I said, it just sucked me right back to that time of being a child, grabbing my favorite Doritos, my jalapeno cheddar dip, and grabbing my favorite drink, you know, Coke or orange juice or something, and sitting down and watching the TV show. It takes me right back to that time. Some other great positives about a pup named Scooby-Doo is that we get some of the best versions of our characters in this show. This is a prequel series, so this chronologically wise takes place before all the other shows. And we have, like I said, Daphne is just one of the best versions of Daphne. She never believes in the ghosts, not scared of anything, and she's more concerned about getting her boots dirty than, you know, what's actually going on in the, you know, show in terms of the ghosts and everything. But then she has this cool butler that just shows up whenever she wants, like Alfred status. She just calls him and he shows up to help whenever she wants or like brushes off her boots. So Daphne is one of the best versions of her. Velma is fantastic. She's like a Q, like 007 Q tech girl with all these cool gadgets, you know what I mean? And like Shaggy and Scooby, that friendship that bond you can see the strengthening of that bond when they're like children it's even stronger it's hilarious so yeah there's a lot of love for all the different characters and the variations of them in this show for me some great episodes in this one in particular there's one with a dog collar where the scooby family do family is having a reunion and they're going to give scooby doo because he's the oldest son the family collar which has jewels and riches on it and then there's an evil ghost dog catcher that comes to the family reunion to try to get them and you even get to like meet ruby you know scrappy's mom and howdy you know his brothers and sisters his mom and his dad and his mom is just fantastic just a classic character scoobert Another great episode is when there's a cheese monster who's attacking the Scooby Doo, the snack factory for Scooby snacks that makes, and they're threatening to shut down the factory, and that's horrible for Shaggy and Scooby because that's their favorite snack, and that's just like a funny callback. Just reminds you of you know when you're watching the news or you hear like online that Hostess or Little Debbie is like canceling some kind of snack or they're never gonna make that one, they're discontinuing it. You're just like it, it leaves you heartbroken. It's just hilarious to watch that kind of episode. So yeah, there's a lot of 
fun episodes in this one that I just really adore. And I think the tropes and stuff all pretty much land. Like even Fred, it's funny. Like Fred Williams, how he's talking about Red Herring and he always thinks Red Herring is the villain, the person who's doing the crime or whatever they're trying to investigate. The, the theme song as well, but also those funny songs that they make up and have for the chase sequences in the episodes. Like there's a lot of great stuff. Like I said, this season has so much going on, so much flavor. It just pops and like I said if you catch me on the right day I'm going to tell you that this is the best version of Scooby-Doo because it just has really so much to offer and so much to love about it and I think the writing is slick the characters the variations of the characters and their interactions are just fantastic and this one has spooky nature spooky feel to it so it has callbacks to like Scooby-Doo where are you you know what I mean even though it's very kitty in nature this one, like I said, has a lot of fun callbacks and a lot of spooky vibes as well. So as you can tell, yeah, I'm very high on a pup named Scooby-Doo. This is one when I bring it up to people or I talk about this one and like on live streams or to people in public, like they always have fond memories or they have positive things to say about pup named Scooby-Doo. I rarely, I've never really ran into anyone that has negative things to say about pup named Scooby-Doo, which is funny. There's only really one person. There's got to be that one person and it's actually my son, when we were binging the Scooby-Doo shows and I was showing him all the different iterations of Scooby-Doo, he doesn't like watching them as kids. Like he, when he asked me to watch the shows, he always asked me to watch them as adults. He doesn't like watching them when they're children. So yeah, that's one person, I guess, yeah, was on this planet Earth that doesn't like a pup named Scooby-Doo. But yeah, I'm, you're getting a lot of praise from me, a lot of high, you know, I put this one on a pedestal because like I said, it's a total surprise. Like this one is one of those seasons when you kind of watch it, it really doesn't, it like, it feels like it has no reason being as good as it is, but it's fantastic. It really is. And it has so much to offer. And that's why I keep telling people like, this is one, if you haven't seen a lot of the Scooby-Doo shows, this is probably like the top recommendation one, you know, like, and the few others, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, 13 Ghosts, Pup Named Scooby-Doo. Those are some of my first like, recommendations if you're going to be diving into Scooby-Doo for the first time because yeah this one because like I said chronologically wise this does take place before them and this will kind of set you up for some of the themes and some of the tropes and the way that they're going to tell the stories this actually sets it up nicely for some of the previous seasons so I think it would be actually fun to if you've never been into Scooby-Doo and you've never watched anything to do Puff Named Scooby-Doo first and then go on to some of the other ones. I just changed my lights right there on a flick of a flick of a wrist. So yeah, in terms of mixed and negatives, I really don't have that much mixed and negatives. Like there's minor nitpicky things, like the fact that I wish there was more episodes, but that's because I love a pup named Scooby Doo so much. So I wish there was some more episodes. And I, there, but there's three seasons. That's still a big chunk of Scooby Doo and stuff. And Fred, Fred gets on my nerves a little bit. I still like him, but I think this is one of my least favorite versions of Freddy. So I, that's one thing I must say is like, that's just minor stuff. Those are just little things. Everything else is great. Like I said, theme song, a lot of the other characters, the episodes are like, there's really no episodes I want to skip or nothing like that. It's funny, it's bombastic, and it's in your face, and it pops. And that's why A Pup Named Scooby-Doo stands the test of time. And it came out in the late 80s and the early 90s, so it, it came out in that good ch chunk of era where we had great cartoons. In the late 80s and early 90s, a lot of those cartoons still hold up to today because they have great writing, fantastic animation, and they push the boundaries. So there was a lot of TV shows that were doing that at this time and that's why they stand the test of time when you return to them now in the more recent times but these are just my thoughts and my opinions on a pup named scooby-doo that means i would love to hear from all of you down below in the comments section share your thoughts is this a season that you're very fond of that you have really fun memories of or is this one that you've never seen just anybody let me know in the comments so we can discuss and i'll give you some cool fun recommendations especially if you're not haven't seen a lot of Scooby-Doo, hit me up down below too, because yeah, I'll give you some cool recommendations for stuff to watch, but be sure, like, subscribe, have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post a video, because we're going to be continuing the Scooby-Doo reviews, and then we're also going to start doing the Exorcist Rad movie review, going, counting down to Exorcist the Believer, and then we'll be ranking all of them once that's done as well, but most importantly, y'all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.